God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. Good morning and welcome to the Church of Christ Congregational. It is nice to be with all of you this morning, whether you are worshiping with us here in the sanctuary or for the comforts of your own home, whether you are worshiping with us right now as it is happening or later on in your day and or in your week, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. This morning, not like last Sunday, I do have several announcements. First, today is the day that we would have held our Super Bowl luncheon in the sanctuary, but because we're not quite ready to gather in that way yet, we have been collecting cans of soup as well as monetary donations that will go to Friendly Hands Food Bank in Torrington. We will continue to collect, but today is the official end of our collection day. Um, lots and lots of cans of soup have been brought, so thank you to those of you who have brought them already. If you would still like to contribute, you can bring them here to the church or leave them on the bench outside of the parish hall, and we will make sure that they get there. If you would like to send a monetary donation, um, I'll remind you the ways that you can do that. Here in the sanctuary, there is a bowl for our Super Bowl where you can put money to go towards friendly hands. Please make checks out to the church and then we'll send one check from the church to friendly hands to make it easier for them. A reminder that our Real Good Church team is going to meet on Wednesday at seven o'clock online via Zoom. Our deacons and faith formation teams will meet on Thursday at seven o'clock online via Zoom. Also on Wednesday this week, there will be an Earth Film discussion. The link to the film to watch should have been in your e-blast and if you are interested and you did not find it, please let me know and I'll make sure you get that information. There will also be a workshop on February 24th online about how to be an advocate for climate justice. This is very important work and if it is something that you are interested in, the information to sign up is in your e-blast. It will continue to be in your e-blast and you can also ask me um, if you don't receive our e-blast or are having trouble finding it. Very important work. And I think that we are all blessed to be a part of it. Moving on, it's hard to believe, but Lent will begin in less than one month. And on Ash Wednesday, March 2nd, we will have a 7 p.m. service here in our sanctuary. And also ashes to go that morning from 7 to 8.30 a.m. outside here at the church for those who cannot make it to the service but would like to receive ashes. It is open to anyone and everyone. No requirements, just the desire to receive them. And I hope to see all of you. Also, as part of Lent, we will begin our Lenten book Bible study the week after, so the week of March 7th, this season we have two options. 
We will continue to gather via Zoom on Tuesday nights at seven o'clock, but I have also decided that there will be an in-person opportunity for our Bible study on Mondays at 6.30. So you have a choice, in-person or online, or you can mix it up and do a little bit of both. Um, if you are interested in taking part in that, please let me know. There is a book that is involved and I can give you the options for getting your book. I think that that is all. So I invite you now to take a deep breath, settle in and prepare your hearts and minds for worship. Those who collect beach glass often become archeologists, seeking out any markings or clues as to the story of the original piece. It often takes much time to bring out the truth behind it. This week, we acknowledge that part of truth telling and its power as a healing property. There are stories that have shaped our lives, leaving us without the ability to see who we truly are in the eyes of God and leaving us without the ability to speak the depth of our stories of struggle. We focus on the importance of recovery of mental health, reclaiming our sense of who we are and being able to proclaim new redemptive stories of divine worth. Let us acknowledge our need to restore, repair, and renew our holy vessels, and that the health of our minds deeply affects our physical and spiritual health. Let us pray together our opening prayer of confession. Centering and calming divine breath of God, you gifted us with amazing minds capable of so many things. You gave us the ability to think and feel. Like our physical bodies, sometimes this aspect of ourselves is beleaguered. We struggle under the strain of disappointment, despair, and delusion. Too often we hide this, afraid of what others might think of our difficulties in managing or moving forward even in the face of devastating circumstances. Too often we perpetuate the stigma of a less than perfect state of mind by shaming ourselves and others. Misunderstanding compounds our fear. We label and belittle, all the while turning the hatred upon ourselves. For no one is immune from troubles of the mind at some point. So many are suffering now, God, weary and distraught, 
grieving and at the end of their rope. We cannot fathom the proportions of loss, and so we look away, sometimes even from the need in our own community. Help us, healer. Show us our capacity for compassion. Forgive our inattention. Move us to move one step at a time toward greater care for one another. In this silence, we sense and acknowledge our yearning for wholeness. I invite you to imagine and search for a warmth at the core of your body. It may help to keep your eyes closed. This warm orb of light is deep within you, although sometimes it feels dulled, even cold. If it feels this way now, allow this. Do not judge yourself. Perhaps you do feel this warmth and all feels right with the world. This just is. You likely will not always feel that way. Whether or not you feel the warmth of peace and assurance right now, this does not make you right or wrong, good or bad. It just makes you human and you are not alone. Perhaps you can imagine the warmth coming from someone whose presence fills you with comfort. See it radiate from them to you as it does when you need it the most. Know this, you are accepted no matter what. Accepting the truth of our difficulties is part of the journey of recovery. Sharing our stories of difficulty can open the way for healing for you, for me, for all. Take a deep breath in to let this truth fill you and breathe out with the relief of assurance. I now invite you to imagine this warmth that surrounds you, extending to those who may next, be next to you in close proximity. Imagine it extending beyond your walls to the neighborhood, the community, the church, and seeing it spread like the rising sun, let it expand to all the world. Let this be our peace. Amen. If you have not already, I invite you to open your eyes. May the peace of Christ be with each and every one of you. I invite you to stand as you are able, in body or in spirit, and join us in our gathering hymn, number 488 in the New Century Hymnal, which is the Black Bound Book.
Please be seated. I invite you to join me in a moment of prayer before we hear our readings this morning. Let us pray. Living God, help us so to hear your holy word that we may truly understand, that understanding we may believe, and believing we may follow in all faithfulness and obedience, seeking your honor and glory in all that we do. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. During this worship series, in addition to hearing a healing story from the Gospel of Matthew, we will hear a quote or two that will tie into our worship theme from contemporary people. From Kim McManus, your heartache is someone else's hope. If you make it through, somebody else is going to make it through. Tell your story. From Maya Angelou, there is no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. And from Brene Brown, owning our story and loving ourselves through that process is the bravest thing that we will ever do. And our gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verses 27 through 33. And if you would like to follow along, it can be found on page 8 in the New Testament section of your Pew Bible. As Jesus went out from there, two blind men followed him, crying loudly, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he entered the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, Yes, Lord. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their eyes were opened. Then Jesus sternly ordered them, see that no one knows of this. But they went away and spread the news about him throughout that district. After they had gone away, a, a, de a demoniac whose mute was, sorry. After they had gone away, a demoniac who was mute was brought to him. And when the demon had been cast out, the one who had been mute spoke. And the crowds were amazed and said, Never has anything like this been seen in Israel. Here ends our reading. Part of my sermon preparation each week starts with something called Lectio Divina. It's a practice which means divine reading. One of the steps is to ask questions of the text. The questions are not to be answered though, just asked. This text provoked many questions for me and perhaps it did for you as well. Two questions that came to my mind after sitting with this week's scripture were, why do the blind people immediately start telling others? And what was the first thing the mute man said after he was given the ability to speak. As I pondered these questions, I tried to put myself in their shoes. I'm a rule follower for the most part, and I'm pretty sure I would follow the rules coming directly from the guy who made it capable for me to see. But at the same time, I can understand why it's hard to hold in something as exciting as having been made to see when before you could not. And the man who couldn't speak, I imagine that even the most shy and introverted among us would have a lot to say after having no option to talk for even a short amount of time. We often take for granted both our ability and our privilege to use our voice, share our thoughts, and explain our needs. We don't recognize the importance of sharing our experience with the world. Telling about the good parts of our lives, sharing the good news is usually easy. Sharing the harder parts of life is more challenging. When our plans don't go accordingly, when we've been hurt, when we need help, 
During those times, sharing can be difficult. Sharing when things are anything less than perfect is really hard. This ideal of perfection that we seem to have, even if unconsciously, causes us to hide away anything less than what we think is right. Showing the less than perfect sides of us, the hurts, the bangs, and the bruises, is showing our vulnerability, and that is hard to do. Biblical commentator Trace Haythorne writes, Jesus invites us as vulnerable disciples, aware of our weakness, even in the wake of healing, we may find him. It is from such a place that the interdependence of the body of Christ finds its wholeness. Most of us try very hard to not feel vulnerable, but there is power and healing in the ability to tell our story. Spark Corps, a nonprofit agency in Georgia, is giving out old books and Sharpies to people, providing them with an opportunity to tell their stories. It is called, What's Your Story? And it's simple. People from all walks of life are invited to write even just a tiny bit of their story into a book. The most amazing part though is what happens afterwards. Others read it and suddenly what might have made people feel isolated and alone, perhaps misunderstood, has in a very short time become a way for two people to connect, even if they never meet in person. We have a habit of showing our lives through filters. In today's world, most of us try to put our very best selves on social media, posting the cute photos of the babies, but not the ones of the crying and the mess and the diapers. We post pictures of our successes, but not the tears, not the misfires, not the mistakes. We show off the final products, but not the hard work not all of the trial and error that went into getting us there. But we don't need social media to put our filtered version of ourselves into the world. There have always been things that families have worked hard to keep behind closed doors, parts of lives that we work hard to keep others blind to. My grandmother might have said, some things you just don't talk about. It is a learned behavior. But in keeping others blind, we blind ourselves as well. Telling our story is important, but listening to one another, hearing others' stories is important too. Listening can be just as powerful and have just a great of impact. There is a book, same time next week. It was just recommended to me by a friend. It had been sent to her by someone she loved and cared about very much, who had a profound influence on her daily life, someone she would consider knowing very well. On the cover of the book was a handwritten note. It said, thank you for being interested in my story. Hopefully while reading the story, you can become more empathetic towards my life. This book contains the stories of people working through mental illness. The synopsis points out that these true stories highlight the need for empathy and compassion and argue for a system that encourages human connection rather than diagnosis by a checklist. The gift of this book was an invitation to see and hear painful truths, an invitation that was risky to offer, but there was power in telling the story and a connection by getting to read it. Telling our truth through story makes a difference. Telling our stories can also be terrifying, risky, and heart-wrenching. We never know how it will be received, and we worry that we are the only ones. But in telling our stories and providing space for other people to tell their stories too, creates deeper connection. We can find strength and healing when we see that we are not alone. Telling our stories and listening to one another can help us find healing that we never knew was out there. It can help to voice grief, suffering, and pain. 
It can help us to find others who truly understand what we are going through, who can see us for who we are, treasures, perhaps a little battered, but still full of value. Through our stories, we can learn deeper empathy, true compassion, and discover our own worth. The people unable to see in our gospel reading this morning were aware of their weaknesses and they sought Jesus out. We all have weaknesses, parts of our life that we don't fully see, but Jesus's grace is available to all and the healing that comes with it is life-changing. Those that were blind, as well as the man unable to speak, were in one way or another given a voice. They were given a chance to tell the world their story. We don't know for sure what the two blind men said had happened to them or what the mute man said next, but I imagine their stories weren't full of perfectly perfect pictures only the best part of their lives. How could it have been? While Jesus might have asked the blind men not to share, he didn't stop them. Their sight wasn't taken away from them for telling. Jesus gave them the ability to share their stories. He gave them voice. Haythorn reminds us that as Jesus' disciples, we are called to be agents and enactors of life a life that is rooted in compassion, a life that touches and heals those who were once marginalized by our communities, but in Christ are restored to wholeness. We have a voice too. We are given the opportunity to be vulnerable, to share our stories without filters, and to give voice to those who haven't been afforded the opportunity to speak. God loves us without filters. Perhaps we can learn to love ourselves without them as well. I pray that with God's help, we all find the courage to tell our own stories, whatever they may be, and empower those with less opportunities, less voice, and less access to healing and wholeness to tell their stories too. Amen.
I invite you to be in the spirit of prayer. Healer of our every ill, especially our malady of stigmatized fear of mental illness, we come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us, showing us the way to recovery from the toxicities and grief of our time. You have stamped each one of us as worthy. We give you thanks that your mercy is wide and your faithfulness to us does not depend upon having our feelings sorted out or our sense of well-being secure. You are not waiting for us to get our act together before offering us your love and grace. We pray especially for those who have experienced heightened and acute mental and emotional difficulties as a result of these times of isolation and fear. We pray for those who feel far from hope and we mourn those who could not find a lifeline to survive this hardship. We pray for those who find themselves without access to adequate care, someone to talk to, or appropriate resources to steady their hearts and minds. We give thanks for those who are telling their stories, showing us how to open our hearts to help others and offering ripples of healing in the community. We pray grateful thanks for progress toward holistic health care and the efforts of all who are working to destigmatize mental illness, making it easier to ask for and get the help so desperately needed. We ask for courage and encouragement to reevaluate how we as a church can help now and into the future. This morning, we pray for Andrew and Anthony, Debbie and Penny, Martha, Joanne, Danielle, and Mason. We pray for Monique and Isabella, the Nodine family, the Colby family. We pray for Herman and Nadine, and we pray for Carl, and for those we pray aloud now and in the comments. For these prayers spoken aloud and those on our hearts, we ask in the name of Jesus the healer who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite Catherine Blasto to come forward. She's going to speak to us a little bit about mental health. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, who um, asked me to come and speak? Um, I have lived in Goshen for over 20 years and uh, a clinical social worker by training. And um, most of my career has been in hospice and end of life care. And um, during the pandemic, I decided to uh, heed God's call actually and do something different. So I have been in private practice for the last um, less than a year actually. Um, and it has been um, a wonderful experience for me, a big you know learning curve too, with all the uh, administrative parts of it. But 
what I have um, seen um, that I'm deeply thankful that God has, um, you know, when God puts something in your heart and you, you just keep listening to it and keep listening to it and then you don't take action and then you do. And then you see how God has confirmed that that's what you're supposed to be doing. So that's the season of life I'm in right now. But what I'm seeing is God's goodness, but also uh, God's uh, reward for being obedient. So what I mean by that is I took a step out to start my private practice and I have met so many people who are deeply hurting right now. So um, I applaud you for, um, Pastor Sarah, for uh, creating just today and focusing on mental health. There is a lot of hurt that's going on around, now, around us right now. So there's a lot of people who are not only grieving, they feel alone, they feel that there's, this pandemic has um, taken out their security. Um, and the word that I keep finding myself um, thinking about is the word untethered, that we've all during this pandemic have, felt, have really felt untethered, um, the uncertainty. And I am at a loss sometimes of how to contain all of that hurt, all of that uncertainty that people have been feeling. And I really think that it's going to take a long time for us to become more grounded, to become more secure, and to become less um, afraid. So um, yesterday I went for a walk with a friend and we spent the whole hour together um, talking about her young adult son mental illness um, and his struggles with bipolar disorder and the ins and outs of hospitalizations and um, trying to find the proper treatment for him. And what we kind of left it at, at the end of our walk was that it's so important to use our faith to stay tethered and, and stay the course of loving people, of loving the challenges that they have and walk alongside them. And that is so important. It's very easy to get overwhelmed by all the need that's out there, um, but it's so important to go back to our faith. Mental illness is not of God. That is something that I have come to, to realize. It is not of God. It's actually my view of the enemy. Um, and in John 10, 10, it says, Satan comes to steal and kill and destroy. Those are his goals. Um, why, what does he come to steal, kill, and destroy? Is it the physical body? That also may be true, but maybe even more so, I believe he comes to steal, kill, and destroy our hope, our mental health, and our sense of peace. And he's tried to do that in a very big way this past three years. But in that very same verse, Jesus reminds us of the solution that is found in one source, in him. He says, I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. So I believe he added that last part, the word abundantly, so we would know it. It isn't just about existing. It's about a good life, a life filled in fullness, even in the midst of deep difficulty. So you may say, you know, I'm on board with this idea, but I just can't seem to get there. So I get it. Um, I've often said the struggle is real, but so is the help of God. Jesus is ready to help us, but we have to do our part. And that is to stay tethered in his word, to stay tethered in our church community, in our friendships. Those are the people, along with God's word, that's going to keep shoring us up, that's going to keep building us up. So the word impossible spells, I am possible. So think about what it is possible in your own life that you can do to keep working with um, your emotions, to keep working with the sense of well-being for yourself. Um, we've all dealt with a lot of restriction and a lot of loss this past few years, and we felt like we can't do certain things. I encourage you to think about what it is that you still can do, what it is still that you are able to do for yourself and for others. 
And that is so important to keep your mental well-being. Um, and think of the ways that we've all grown in the last few years, the ways that we've all adapted, you know, during this pandemic to have church online, to have um, businesses create so many different opportunities of how to continue to stay in business and how people have pivoted and the ideas have come together to make life continue to work. But there's still a sense of loss that's been there um, for people feeling like they can't even leave their home. Um, and in the same vein, what you focus on, you will see. So I work a lot with older people and um, who had been homebound um, during this pandemic. And what is going on when you're home? Your TV's on, right? And every day people are listening to the news. So one of the things I always tell people is to turn off their television because what you see and comes at you day in and day out it penetrates your mind, penetrates your thoughts, and your pattern of thinking changes. So if you think about what you're exposed to, what you see, what you surround yourself, and what you allow yourself to see, it will come into your mind, and those thoughts will become feelings. So, and also the way that you're gonna start seeing yourself. So I always tell people, just check the news, it's always there, but then go do something else. Distract yourself. What is it that you can do instead of what it is that you can't do? So lean into faith and practices um, and practice it because Jesus can take your anxiety and your pain and he can take your grief and your worry. But at the same time, seek out the support that's available to you. Um, I do a lot of grief work. My support groups are full right now with people who are have lost a loved one um, during this time. And there's such power in knowing what you said earlier, um, Pastor Sarah, that you're not alone. Share your stories. So very often people will say to me, is this normal? I am still doing this. I am still feeling so distraught by this loss. Is this normal? And the answer is always yes. It is normal what people are going through. Um, and everybody's experience is different, but there's such power to be able to hear what other people are saying and for you not to feel alone in your whatever issue that you're facing. So reach out. There's still, I know all my colleagues that I'm in touch with, we're all working hard. So reach out. There's people there to help and people have been trained, support groups for any kind of issue. There's a support group online. If you can get your hands you know, um, to a resource. Uh, Greenwood's Counseling Center has been extremely um, helpful in this area to connect uh, people with um, services. Um, they will do an intake. They will uh, match you up with a therapist according to your need. They will um, send out information about what other services might be available in, your, in our area. So they're located in Litchfield and um, they've been a tremendous you know, support for um, mental health professionals and connecting people in our community. So the other thing I wanted to just touch base on is that sometimes, you know, when we go through a mental health struggle and that anxiety seems to be the, you know, most common one right now that I see is our thoughts, our emotions are always about us. But the minute you start thinking about someone else, your own emotions will settle down, as I say, or they will pass because you end up thinking about something else, something outside of yourself. And there's a lot of healing power in that. Not that you compare your troubles to somebody else's troubles, but that you can feel good. Think about all the times. I know you guys, some of you, you volunteer everywhere. So think how good you feel about volunteering and how giving back to your community, to your fellow, you know, um, Oceanite and beyond can feel so um, important in terms of this is not all about us. This is about our community. And when we're part of a community, our anxiety will go down, our mental health will increase, and that will have a, such an increased sense of well-being that you're not a lonely island. So, and that's what a lot of people have felt, you know, the past three years that they've been alone. So find the opportunities that you feel comfortable to reach out. They're always there. If you heard of somebody's, you know, death, send that card, send, um, I had a, a wonderful, I had COVID in November and my neighbor sent me, she couldn't come because she had COVID too, but you know what? She sent me soup 
uh, in the mail. <laughs> And it was chicken soup and it was wonderful. And he really lifted my spirits to be able to know that my neighbor really does care for me. And um, so do what you can and do it often, because when you're not doing that, your problems tend to, you know, um, increase in, term, in your mind. They really do. So um, I would just encourage you to reach out to your community, but also to stay tethered in God's work because that's where true peace is found. Thank you, Catherine. The words of Jesus we heard in this week's healing story were, do you believe I am able to do this? Jesus's question invites us to consider our own belief and transformation. He invites us to step into a renewed vision of our lives, to speak into being a new story, not be bound by the stories of the past, inscribed on us by others that may be oppressing and limiting. Beach glass is usually somewhat cloudy when dry. When it comes into contact with water, it becomes clear and bright. I tried that with this vessel right here, containing the pieces, and when you add the water, the transformation is just incredible to watch. I invite you to imagine this transformation as a prayer for clarity. Ask for a new way to see the struggles you may be experiencing. Ask for understanding and a way forward. Take a moment to think on this, imagining the broken pieces, now bright and clear in the water, and breathe deeply, inviting the spirit to live and move and transform you and others who need clarity for their lives. Each week, we have been looking at the reaction of the crowd in the healing story. This week, the crowd was amazed and cried out that nothing like it had ever been seen before. How interesting that the crowd is seeing something for the first time, just like the blind men were brought to sight. Could it be that this is as important to the story as the ones who received the physical healing? How could we open our eyes figuratively in new ways? What do we need to envision anew? In our communal discerning about how this church community can become a health hub through our ministry and mission, 
let us put our minds to imagining how we can shine a positive light on the work of mental health. The needs are so urgent, especially now. Throughout this time in this worship series, I invite you to explore new possibilities, possibilities for a new or renewed commitment to a contribution that we can make here in this church to the larger community. If you would like to make a donation that helps fund our ministries here, you can do so by leaving an envelope in the basket on the table behind the last pew here in the church. You can mail it to PO Box 216, or you can make an online donation on our website at www.goshenchurch.com. I invite you now to stand as you are able, in body or in spirit, and join us in our closing hymn, number 572, in the Christian Praise Hymnal, which is the Red Bound Book.
invite you now to join me in our common commission, which can be found on the insert in your bulletin. Let us now go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no person evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all people, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now go with confidence that the one who is the living water is already cleansing, renewing, and clarifying our lives, recovering our depth for all and our joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus ring in your ears. Do you believe it is possible? And may the spirit hover, move, and deliver salve to your soul and a spring in your step. Amen.